man, I really wish there was a way that I could get better with my ARs without having to shoot a bunch of ammo. You know, things that I could possibly do to help me get better without having to shoot a bunch. Oh, oh wait, I just did that. There's a lot of things that we can do without shooting around and it's not just dry pressing the trigger. I'm gonna show you guys some very basic skills and drills that you can do at home in your basement, in your garage, in your backyard, somewhere that it's safe to handle and manipulate empty guns that will support you having a better outcome when you go to a training class, go to the training range, when you're in the field hunting or in violence. What we're looking for is ingraining an excellent set of skills where we can dominate the gun. When I use the word dominate, you, the human, are in control of the machine. You know where the muzzle is in time and space at any time. You understand the condition of the safety and where the trigger is, the condition of the chamber. Is the gun unloaded? Is it loaded? Do I need to get it reloaded? You understand how to get into a good, strong shooting position from wherever you're at so that you can get hits. In our three-day rifle and pistol courses, we do a lot of work on small targets at distance. Three, four inch targets at 50, 100 yards and farther with basic guns like this. You know, with something with a, a magnified optic on it, like this rifle here, you know, that's pretty easy. It's really easy with both of these guns, but without having some solid skills, it's not always easy to repeat. So let's get right into it. I want you to be able to ingrain excellent skills that you can repeat anytime you go to the range to give you the desired outcome. And what is the desired outcome? It's to put a projectile onto whatever target we need to hit. Again, could be a bad guy, could be big game for the table, could be a target, competition, or for fun. Most of these guns are very accurate. There's good ammunition available when it's available. It's good ammunition on the market these days. If you do your job, the gun will do it. Five, 10 minutes, work through these movements. They're gonna make you more comfortable on the range. Number one, make sure that the sling is set up how it's supposed to be. A sling is not meant to have this gun down around your crotch. The sling should be able to hold the buttstock in a position where that gun can get mounted and come right in to a upright shooting position. You should not have to do anything with the sling. The sling should be adjustable though, because you may need to be able to adjust it to get out of it or to transition to the opposite shoulder. So make sure that your sling is set up for success. I like two point slings. I use the Viking tactic sling that Kyle Lamb uh, designed and sells. I think they're excellent. Make sure that your optic is set up in an optimal position. If you're running a red dot like this on one of these guns, Move it forward and back a little bit and figure out where, when you get a good cheek weld on the gun, you've got a good sight picture. Are you seeing everything that's capable through that optic? Play with it. Get a good zero on your gun before you go to class. If you don't know how to do that or haven't yet figured it out and you're gonna go to class to figure it out, overlook that. Do I have my gun set up where things that are gonna fall off are Loctited, are, uh, torqued properly. We see a lot of stuff in class where parts just fall off of guns. Loading and unloading, manual of arms. It's not just how to get the magazine in and out, but it's about dominating the gun. One, so that you're safe, but more importantly, you're in control of everything going on around you. Basic loading process in a dry fire setting. I can lock my bolt back. I'm gonna do so while maintaining good grip and muzzle control. Come to a high port. If you've got an adjustable sling, that's gonna be really easy for you to do. But stock is not just out here in space. I'm not up here, but I'm in tight to my body and I can control the gun from this position. And I can pin it in here where it's really easy to hold. I'm not just holding it out here, but that butt is against my rib cage and pinned between my forearm and elbow. Magazine weld canted inboard towards the center line of the body. Now I'm gonna fetch a magazine. This one's got dummy rounds in it. Notice which side the top round is on. It's on the right. So as I insert into the mag well, seat lock and tug, I'm not just pushing in, but I'm tugging. Good reason for that is this often happens to guys that don't put the magazine in all the way. So in dropping that mag, the top round fell out onto the floor. So now the top round is on the left, on the left. Check this out. Seat lock tug, 
cycle. Could have also hit the bolt release. Check this out. Drop the mag again. Now the top round is on the opposite side. See that? So that's one way of verifying that the chamber's loaded. Another way is you can visually press check. So I can open the bolt. See that? I can pull that bolt back. But now here's the caveat. If you do that, make sure that you pump the forward assist to ensure it's closed. Safety's on. Positive control of the safety. Close the dust cover. Readjust your sling to your carry position, which for me, it's going to be right here where that butt stock is up tight so I can get that gun up. The gun is loaded. I am now maintaining positive control of the safety. A sling is not just meant for this. If you can have control of the gun, you should have control of the gun, even if it's just one hand, depending on what you're doing. But do maintain positive control of the gun. If that gun leaves both of your hands and you pick that gun back up, one of the first things that you should do is confirm that the safety is in the on position. Safety is on. A lot of stories out there. I've heard numerous stories. I have seen people discharge these guns where that sling catches on something on the body and it doesn't take much to send the hammer forward. Not much at all. Now let's clear the gun out. So I can come back to that high port position, remove the source of ammunition, store it on my body, cycle, cycle, lock the bolt back, visually and if needed physically inspect the chamber. Look at the bolt face, look into the breech and make sure that that is empty. Verify there's nothing in there. Gun is unloaded, bolt forward, depending on how you need to carry this gun and go on to your next steps. So let's try it from the right hand side. We're gonna lock that bolt back. Lock the bolt to the rear. Not every control is gonna be the same on all these guns, guys, so you gotta know where yours are. So I'm in this high port position, beer can grip, seat lock tug. Look at this, the thumb can go right to the bolt release. See that, right to the bolt release. So as that mag goes in, thumb goes right to the bolt release. See that? So that's easy when you're working with the right hand with a gun that's set up for a right-hander. Just like before, round is now on the other side. But if you needed to, I can press check. I can also, if need be, if it's too dark, I can pull that back and drop my finger in. Bolt forward, pump, pump on the forward assist and serve the safety is on, dust cover closed, let it hang, readjust sling as needed. Unload, come back to that position, remove the feed, store it on your body. Easy, easy, cycle, cycle, lock the bolt to the rear, visually and if needed physically inspect the chamber. So the thing about the loading and unloading process is we don't want you to get fixated in having to do it in a certain position. What if you can't? What if you had to be right in front of your body? So practice these things. If you're in this compressed position, I can bring that mag inboard, watching my feet. Remember, pay attention to what side that round is on, left side, in, work the bolt, if you need to press check, do that, or if you paid attention, it's now on the right. That's part of the system you're going to develop, right? If you need to feel it, you can open that bolt, put your finger in. For those of you shooting from the right-handed position, which is most of you, same thing, I can bring the support hand around and I can feel, right? I feel, pump, pump, safety's on, close the dust cover, and back to whatever next step is gonna be happening in your shooting or training. If I just shot a bunch, I should be able to, and this is an empty magazine, I should be able to change magazines. How do you tack mags? So if I shot a bunch and I needed to top off, I'm showing you guys a few ways to do this that uh, you can easily manipulate magazines in and out of the gun. Not that way, but I got it. Started to fumble on that one. And the reason that we're doing that is we need to manage our ammunition when we're out on the line, when we're training. We're managing the ammunition to get a good outcome. So let's work through some very basic movements that are gonna make you a better shooter. Feet, about shoulder width apart. Good, strong, forward weight by a slight bend of the knees is okay. I like to tell people, imagine you were gonna be in a fist fight or imagine that you were kind of like scrapping with somebody, or if I said, hey, you're about to take off running and the first person to cross the room wins a million bucks, you would probably feel your weight 
kind of drop a little bit. All right, here we go, I'm ready. About shoulder width apart, good dominant grip on the uh, fore end of the gun. Now, this grip that's become very popular, the C grip, this is not something new. Guys like Benny Cooley and DR Middlebrooks have been doing this for years. Check those guys out. DR Middlebrooks and Benny Cooley. Think about the grip. As the gun gets mounted, you are bringing the buffer tube to your cheek, your cheek weld. We want repeatability. I'm not bringing my face to the gun and the gun up, and I exaggerated that on purpose. I'm bringing the gun right up into my line of sight. And as I do that, I am pulling that gun back into me, and I am driving my shoulder forward. Support hand is pulling into the shoulder, and the, the shoulder is driving forward. Right hand pulling in, right shoulder driving forward. Support hands pulling, pushing, pulling, pushing. Out, and I'm exaggerating how far out, out, back in. Things like chest carriers, body armor, heavy jackets, it's gonna change how that works. Hunting coat, it's gonna change how that works. The sticky rubber might wanna stick to your clothes or, or the gear you've got on. Out, up. So if I practice this, and I have ingrained what it looks like for that dot or these sights to appear in my vision, I'm gonna know what I'm doing when I get out on the firing line. I'm gonna see it enough. Most of the support for the, for the rifle, the carbine, the AR, is this, shoulder forward, pulling back in. Shoulder forward, pulling back in. Now think about this as well. If you slightly pop your butt back, look at what it does to my shoulders. If I pull my, my butt back a little bit, my shoulders go forward, that support hand stays the same, I am locked into the gun. This hand is not doing it. This hand is working the safety and working the trigger and running the gun. So we'll come to this low ready position. People often say low ready is this exact angle. It's contextual. So in your training, practice at different heights of low ready. Low ready means you can see over the gun, I can see what's going on, I can see the vehicle in front of me, but I have not yet decided that something or somebody needs a gun pointed at them. And then when you decide to, you've got a target on the wall or a target where you're training, bring that gun up, lock out into your shooting position, get a good sight picture, I'm on the trigger, safety back on, conscious of that. Gun is pulled in tight, good forward weight bias. Got the stock adjusted for me so that when that gun comes up, I've got a good sight picture. Ready? Up. Ready, up. Now we're gonna start working that safety. And what we're looking for is that safety to come off as the gun rests on target. So if you watch this switch, Kanan, you will see on my ambi selector here that that switch comes off as the gun is mounted. And that safety switch goes right back on as soon as I have made a decision not to shoot. Ready, up. Ready, up. Ready, up. How about a compressed position? Check out my laser here on the floor. I don't, pretty sure you can see that. Anywhere that laser goes, so too goes the muzzle. Yes, some of you smart guys are gonna talk about the offset of the laser to the bore, but for reference, I want you to think about where that laser is, so too goes the bore. We have to dominate our muzzle. So if I have people around me, I may need to be in this position. This may not be safe if I'm with my friends or family or coworkers or teammates. Depress the muzzle. Look at my foot placement shoulder width apart, but don't get fixated because you may be moving. You want a good forward weight bias and strong. As that gun comes up, mount it, pull it right in. As that gun comes up, mount it, pull it right in. Right-handed position. As that gun comes up, easy, right? How about high port? High port now. So I've got that gun straight up. Now I'm moving, I'm talking, but if I need to, that gun can come right out. High port. This is a position also where if I need to, I can tack mag from here. So check this out. There's a lot of ways to do this, but what if it's time to top off, but I still have some ammunition on board? 
There's a lot of ways to do this. I showed you that one shaped like an L. Take one magazine, grab over the mag that's in the gun, make an L, drop the mag, rotate in. You could take the mag, make a C around the magazine so that it separates the two. Use your other fingers, drop, and insert. Tack mag, tack mag. So from this position, that's a nice spot to do that. And you're working on dominating the gun. So from the high ready position, gun is tucked in under the arm, ready to be driven out and brought back in to the shoulder mount. Fingers high off the trigger. You gotta be careful where you're placing your index finger. It's pretty easy to push the mag release uh, if you're not careful. This, a little bit of a bend to the trigger finger up into a position like this is not a bad thing so that you don't accidentally or inadvertently push a mag release. So high ready position. Oh, there we go. Oh, the gun comes to rest in that clavicle position. Safety comes off because you are making in this action a conscious decision to take the safety off and go to the trigger. Again, the safety and trigger are working in conjunction. You are making a conscious effort when you decide to take that safety off. It's not just because the gun's coming up, it's you have decided to shoot, so if that gun gets mounted, the safety and trigger are working in concert. Conscious decision to bring that back on. Let's go from that depressed position. Ready? Up. Ready. Up. Ready. Up. Ready. Up. Ready. Up. We'll add in a couple of these turns now. Come from this way and I'm gonna to turn to the right. Ready? Up. We'll come this way and turn to the left. Ready? Up. Ready? Up. And of course you're gonna be identifying your targets. Ready? Up. Ready? Up. Ready? I want you to land in a good position so that you're ready to shoot, fight from that position. So in this dry practice, you are teaching yourself how to get in and out of these shooting positions so that you can do whatever needs doing once you get there. Don't figure this stuff out in the field. Do it now in the training. So we've got those ready positions. Remember, compressed, low ready, contextual at what angle, depending on what's in front of you and what you need to see. High ready or high port, easy peasy. In all of those, that gun comes right back. You've got strong body posture, butt comes back, weight comes forward. Gun is being pulled into the clavicle. Clavicle and shoulder are driving forward. You're strong behind the gun. You're not just, you're not just holding it up. I'm locked in pulling this thing. You should be capable of 100 yard hits standing all day long. So what if we have to take a knee? So as that gun comes up, I just step back or forward depending on where I'm going onto my knee. I might lean real far forward or I might sit right down. If you look right here, just this is just like windshield wipering in jujitsu. I swing that shoulder side foot down and then I come right down to my butt and I can get pretty strong from here. If I need to get up, I sit myself back up windshield wiper that foot back out and fight back up to my feet. Let's see what that looks like from the other side. If I need bone to bone contact for more accuracy, I can do that here. Or I can windshield wiper the shoulder side foot in, under, come right back down to my butt. And again, context matters here. I might need to get lower. How do I get back up? Up, oh, windshield wiper back out, fight back up. Another thing that you can practice is coming straight down into a squat, feet down, and again, depending on what you need to do, how skinny you need to get, you can drop from here straight down into the prone position. Support hand to the earth, drop down, gun comes in tight, good cheek weld, start to become aware of your breath. I'm melting into the earth, getting steady, 
getting a good body posture. One of the things I'm looking for is, is my optic vertical over the bore, is the gun canted? That will make a difference at distance. I need to ensure that I'm, that I'm ingraining a good skill of holding my setup level. How do I get back up? Safety's on, trigger finger is high off of the uh, trigger, not lingering around it, but high off of there. I've got positive control of the safety with my thumb. Support hand, back to the earth, fight back up to your feet. Super simple. We'll work it from both sides here now. Now when I get down into that prone position, you want to start to pay attention to some body posture. Your feet, your knees, your hips, your shoulders, and how you're melting into the ground. So again, I'm gonna go right to prone. I'm gonna do it quick once, so you can see how fast you can actually get into that position. We'll imagine there's a target 50 or 100 yards away and you need to get stop, solid and steady and get there quick. It's pretty easy to do, slip out of the sling and there you go. Get back up and there you go. So first step, bring the gun up. And the reason I'm doing that is that I don't want to sit down and drive my muzzle into the dirt or floor. So the gun comes up, slip out of your sling, non-dominant hand to the earth, come right down and drop in. Now, you will start to notice some very simple things that help make you steadier. Number one, I'm not on my toes. My feet are turned out flat. I wanna get rid of any tension in the muscle, any tension in my body. And so now I'm developing what's known as a natural point of aim. If you get a sight picture through your dot sights or, or optic, and you pick your butt up and just move it a little bit to the right and notice the shift of your point of aim. And we're just gonna experiment here. Move your butt a little bit side to side and notice how it shifts. Now what you'll notice is if I shift to the right, it may shift my point of aim the opposite direction. What we're doing here in this dry fire is we are ingraining a good natural point of aim. If you square up on a target 10 yards, 50 yards, 500 yards away, and you drop yourself to this position, when you've done it enough, you should be able to get down and have your dot or crosshair or sights pretty close to what it is you're looking to hit. If I was shooting at something that's those distances away and I was just this far different, in that movement a few degrees off, when I drop down, I'm gonna be 20 or 30 feet away from a target that's a few hundred yards away. This versus this. So, let's get back up and try that again. Pick the point that you wanna aim at, and as you mount that gun, lock in to where you're going. Bring the gun up, slip out, drop. Feet come flat, your pelvis melts into the earth and you should come to rest looking at whatever the target is. Now, you may need to make some adjustments from this position. Dot might need to be uh, adjusted for brightness. You may need to adjust zoom on an optic. We're not gonna go into all of that right now, but these body mechanics, you can drill the snot out of. Gun comes in tight to the shoulder. Safety comes off when you're ready for it. Start to control your breath. In practice, in this dry practice that you're doing, watch your dot, your sights, or your crosshair and how your breath affects them. If possible, we're gonna look for that shot to break at the bottom of our breath, the bottom of the exhale. So you're gonna exhale, pause, and press. Recycle that gun just so I can do it again. Support hand comes to the earth. Pull yourself up to your knees and you're right back into your shooting, fighting position. Pretty simple, isn't it? Let's do it from the other side now. Gun comes up, I slip out of the sling, take a knee, support hand comes down to the earth. I do not drive my muzzle into the earth. I come down flat, my feet uh, are turned outwards so that I've got all that tension gone. Gun gets pulled in tight and I start to become aware of my breath. When I'm ready, I can take that safety off, come to the bottom of the breath, pause, press, 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 press. Shot breaks, the gun would have 
functioned as designed and reloaded itself. I'm gonna to decide to get back up, support hand to the earth, fight back up to my feet. Pretty simple stuff. Once you get there, you can get back through your sling, adjust as needed, and continue. So let's jam it all together. Some basic movements that you guys can train through. Ready? Compressed. Ready? Whoop. Safety back on. Come back down. Compressed. Good body posture. Ready? Up. Gun snaps out. Body strong. Safety comes off when you align on target. Safety comes back on when you decide you are done. Ready? Up. Yes. Safety back on. Let's go to a low ready position. Low ready position. Ready? Up. Safety back on. Ready? Up. Safety comes back on. Ready? Up. Safety comes back on. Ready up. Safety comes back on. Let's go to a high port position. Ready up. Safety comes back on. Ready up. Safety comes back on. Ready up. Safety comes back on. High port position. High port position. Ready up. Ready up. Ready up. All right, I like that. All right, I like that. Let's go to a knee. Ready, up, drop. Now remember, different positions here. Bone to bone, I might just need to take a knee. I might need to get super skinny, right? Get back up, do it. Let's do it again, we'll go on this side. Ready, up, take a knee. Get whatever hit you need. Context, context, context matters. Fight back up. Let's go to our belly. Ready? Slip out. It's down to the earth. Get yourself steady and strong. Start to think about what this all looks like. Guns pulled in tight. I am rock solid. Tension to breath. Do you fire when you're breathing? It depends. If you gotta drill something, you do. But if you really have the time, can you inhale, exhale? Pause at the bottom. <sighs> Pause. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Break. So safety be off. Inhale. <sighs> Exhale. Because I'm going to talk through it, I will not really be pausing because I'll be talking. Exhale. Right now I'd be paused. Pressure, 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 pressure. Break. Safety would come back on. Right back up to your feet. I hope this stuff helps, guys. These are really basic movements, but these are the only movements that you need to do to effectively point the muzzle of your gun at whatever it is needs shooting for lawful and righteous reasons. The better you get at putting yourself into a dominant, strong position to support that gun, in a repeatable way where the relationship between your eye and the dot is there and you have done it enough times that your body is comfortable in those positions and you are comfortable. Geez, I never really was in this position. It's hard for me to find my dot. Pretty good if you do that in practice in the safety and confines of your own home. The better chance you're gonna have to win that match, to win in violence or to get the game. Push yourself to just train a little bit doing these movements. And when you get out on the range or you get in that bad scenario, they're gonna pay dividends. Anything that you do in dry fire, do validate in live fire. Don't just dry fire it and think you're good. But these very basic manipulations with the carbine, these very basic body movements are gonna pay big dividends for you on the range. MickeyWithCarryTrainer.com, Drew behind the editing desk, today not behind the camera, not pointing the gun at anybody. Thank him, he works very hard. Hey, if you guys dig these videos, share them, like them. I do hope that you have subscribed to this channel. We hope to see you again real soon. Don't be dickheads, be well. Long and the short of it, guys, super controlled. Identify, threat. Well, that's not good. This is a Radiant Weapons, just to get that out of the way, because I know people will ask in the comments. So I am shooting, if you probably noticed, a gun 
in my left hand even though I'm righty. I'm blind in my right eye, it's a whole nother story. The Yankee Hill machine back up sight up front, a Magpul in the rear, aim point T1. I do have a Surefire light laser combo on here because this is the gun that we have at home in case we need it. Other than that, uh, it's a, a bone stock Radian uh, the way that I ordered it from them. 